and welcome back to Model Kit Stuff Quick Tips and this quick tip video is all about applying decals. Um, it's the one thing that um, if you're new to the hobby is not really explained in the instructions of any model kit really um, and there are one or two little tips and tricks that if you know them will make your life so much easier. There's nothing worse than putting a lot of effort into a model making it look really good, then you come and put the decals on and they all go silver um, and they wrinkle and they tear and you and they didn't sit down into the creases properly. So um, it's not a difficult job if you know what to do. So uh, let's crack on and explain the basic principles of putting some decals down. So I'm going to do um, the decals in two different ways. I'm gonna, gonna do the sort of the traditional quick way of putting um, a decal on um, that is the way that is often described if it's described at all in the instructions and then I'm going to show you my way of doing it that works for me um, it might be slightly different than what you might see one or two other people do but um, the basic principles are always the same so um, I'm going to introduce you to Sally uh, poor old Sally has a hard life because I use Sally for all of my experiments uh, and today Sally is going to give her wing to the cause of applying a decal. Um, so let's just talk about um, putting a decal on um, and why sometimes they don't sit properly and, and go silver. So most models, not all obviously, but most models um, have a matte paint finish. So if we were to look at this under a, um, a microscope, that matte paint finish is quite bumpy. Um, and then what happens is you come and put, if I split this in half like our wing, um, you come and put your decal on and it lies across the top of that bumpy uh, paint and in all of these little dips in your paint you've trapped air and that's what makes your decal look silver in the clear parts. So to avoid that we want to smooth this down a bit and there's two different ways you could do that. You could sand the paint down with a very very um, um, fine uh, sanding paper or sanding stick so that you get um, a nice smooth surface um, that might be doable on some on some but you could see you know getting into some of these nooks and crannies and crevices making the paint smooth is going to be a challenge so what we do is we add a level a leveling uh, liquid which usually is a varnish now a varnish won't be a hundred percent flat it will undulate a little bit with your dips uh, but basically what happens as it dries um, and it sinks into these troughs here it makes the surface more flat it's not perfectly flat um, and again I, some people will sand it and re-varnish it and if you're doing um, uh, a car that might be the, the way to go but most of the time um, putting a, a varnish coat on helps with that process. So basically what we're trying to achieve is as smooth a surface as possible for, so that when we put our decal on it's sitting on the smoothest surface possible. But that's not always possible. So if we look at Sally here she's got all these lovely panel lines in there and we're going to want to slap a decal on that and then it's either going to trap the air in and make the um, panel disappear or we're going to keep the um, contours of that panel in and we might dis um, distort the, the decal. So let's look at how we're going to do this um, to um, the best way of getting those decals down and looking like they're painted on, which is ultimately what we're trying to achieve. So if we take Sally, you will notice that she has a little red line. Um, and on this side of the red line, the wing tip, we have already put some varnish down and it's had a coat of this 
other clear coats are available um, and on this side we just have primer and the primer itself is quite rough um, um, because it's meant to be a key for the paint so it's designed to be uh, rough and bumpy or quite matte actually um, so we have a glossy side and a matte side so what we're going to do is going to put one of these decals on each side it's exactly the same same decal on the same piece of paper um, so let's just deal with cutting them off the paper very quickly um, you'll see some people swear by using scissors and some people will swear by using a knife um, here's my view on it it doesn't matter whether you use a knife or scissors as long as you're not cutting too close to the decal if you're going to be cutting very close to the decal um, for whatever reason um, then you should use scissors and I'm going to show you why I'm going to cut a strip off the top of that with this knife and what you can see is that as I've cut with the knife I've created a little ridge and that will distort your decal and may, co may cause you some problems so, in the case of these two that are fairly close together and actually the f there is about a millimetre between the film because there's quite a bit of film around these which is why we're using them because I, uh, I want lots of opportunity for silvering um, we'll use some scissors Now the other thing that you've got on a decal sheet other than a decal is the numbers which identify them in, for your instructions They will float off in your water in the same way as the decal will and they may well flow over and under your decal and stick on and before you know it it's attached to your decal and you can't get it off and you've ruined your decal so always make sure that the markings on your sheet don't go in the water so there we go now some people trim the paper down um, others don't um, for me I don't bother um, it depends really on the size of your decal if you've got a very small decal once we've soaked this I will pick the paper off and I'll take it off the paper and get the paper out of the way if it's a very long one or it's a funny shape we'll leave it on the paper and slide it off because decals the bigger they are the more they want to curl um, and they stick to themselves better than they stick to anything else um, before you know it you've got this massive cobweb of decals that you can't do anything with and you and you ruined right so we drop them in the water um, and leave them to soak for a moment now if you leave them a little bit too long the paper eventually will separate from the decal and float to the bottom don't worry if that happens it's not the end of the world fish the paper out lift your decal up back on that piece of paper it's as simple as that right I'll come back to you in a sec when these are ready to come off how do you know if your decal is ready to come out push it out of the water finger underneath thumb on top just move your thumb around if the decal doesn't move it's not ready if the decal slides around you're ready to go okay I think this is ready that's ready so we're going to do this the basic simple way that probably shown in your instructions so they'll call it a water slide decal and basically what you do we'll do it that way so we get some panel lines across it put your finger on it you slide your paper out then you need to move it around you can move it around carefully with your tweezers or you can use a paintbrush and once you have it in the place that you want get a piece of paper and just blot it there you go decal on I can absolutely guarantee you that we've trapped air under that decal and that that, that will be silver in the light so let's have a look at this side so let me introduce you to these these 
liquids, and there are other brands available, um, basically are decal softening liquids. Um, one is stronger than the other, uh, is basically how this works. Um, it says on this one, setting solution for decals, um, softens decals to conform to irregular surfaces for a painted on look. And this one says, softens decals and improves adhesion. So my rule of thumb with these is, the blue one I use on flat surfaces, and the red one I use on bumpy surfaces. So um, this is ready to go on now. Um, I want this decal to actually separate from the paper so I can show you. So there we go. So there we go, my decal's floated off, but it's not a disaster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, this red one and we're just going to paint on the area where we're going to put the decal with some of this uh, microsol and I'm going to get my paper and I'm going to rescue my decal like so Now, if that decal was smaller, I probably would have taken it right off the paper and then just let it drop on. So, just like before, we're going to block the excess water off. And just like before, we're going to get it in the right place using the brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from the centre out and basically use the brush like a squeegee. And that's going to get as much liquid and air out of the, from underneath that decal as possible. And then we're just going to run it over the panel lines there, just to push it in a little bit, and then we'll leave it to dry. Okay, so the decals have now dried, um, and what we can see is, um, they're not too bad, but there's some silvering under that one. Um, I can't see that there's any silvering under that one. So the glass, gloss varnish has made a difference. Now, even though we've put gloss varnish down, there's still the potential to get some um, silvering under the decal. So we will treat this and see if we can get rid of the silvering. Um, like I say, it's just around that top there, but let me show you the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little pin. And where we've got some silver in, we're just going to prick the surface with a pin. Careful not to dig in too hard. We don't want to actually um, put an indentation in the plastic. But we just want to break the surface of the decal. And then what we do is with our paintbrush, this brush gets only used for decal fluid. We're just flooding the top. And what will happen is the liquid will go into those holes that we've made with the pin and go underneath the, the decal. Um, and as we press with the brush, um, it will just, it will not quite refloat the decal, but it will flood underneath um, and as it does that, it'll push the air out. Um, so we'll leave that to dry and see if that improves things. Now on this other side where we've put the um, varnish, we've got some panel lines that the decal has, has sat over the top of rather than conform to. So all we're going to do here is with a very sharp blade, is we're just going to lightly pass the blade over the top. Now we're not push, pushing down, we're not trying to slice things up. 
just gently running over the top. Simple as that. Now I can see a little bit of silvering now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some pinpricks on this one as well. And just like with the other decal, flood the top. And this will soften up the, the decal. So we've got liquid flooding underneath. We've got the decal softening and as it as it softens it'll settle back down and where we've cut it it will settle into those panel lines and it'll look more painted on than before. So we've allowed this to dry uh, and what has happened is some of the um, decals have, have settled down and some not quite. So we can repeat the process um, of going through the panel lines with the knife, like so. Um, we can repeat the process with the pin wherever we can see there's a little silver spot. Um, and we can then put some more um, liquid over it, set in solution, let it dry off. And we can repeat that as many times as we like um, until, we've, until we're happy with it. Um, usually doesn't take more than a couple of goes um, unless you've got a very very uneven surface so when I did the JU52 for example if you go and have a look at that video you can uh, see me putting the, the decals down on there uh, and that was a corrugated surface and that was quite a challenge but once that's done and dry and you're happy with it then um, to make sure that you've got a sort of a, a painted on look make sure that you varnish or clear coat your um, decal along with the finished paintwork um, and that just ties it all in um, it takes any sheen away from the, the decal that might have been there in the light um, and just um, um, seals in all that um, work you've done with the decal so um, it keeps it all in place and you're ready for any weathering so there you go um, that's how to do it um, make sure you put your varnish on first and your varnish on after um, but it's a very simple process I hope that was in some way um, useful um, many thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all soon